Hello again, and welcome back to another one. And today we have a couple of topics to cover, from Eminem's Car and Call album's impressive 2021 run in the United States, to a question from Crook that has sparked a huge debate on Twitter, where he stated, who would you credit for taking hip-hop global? By itself, this is a tough one because views vary depending on where you resided when you first heard about hip-hop, hence experiences in South Africa, even in the same year, won't be the same as someone who resided in Japan. And as expected, the answers were all over the place and we also have reactions that don't look to go as planned for ASAP Rocky after he confirmed that he's dating Rihanna recently. And before we dive into the details, remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and find me on social media at etlifestyle underscore web. So before we get to the debates, according to Hit's Daily Double, Eminem's 2005 Greatest Hits album in 2021 surpassed sales of a quarter million equivalent units in the United States. And this isn't something that should be happening for an artist with a popular narrative on social media that says his music doesn't age well. This is why I chuckle when I hear anecdotes like no one plays Eminem in a barbecue when objective information like this is readily accessible on the internet. So claims like that says more about a person's bubble, not a good look. And some have reacted like this. An album over 10 years old doing 260k exploding head emojis, to which a user correct, over 15 years old. And perhaps this one is directed at Inesco. How is Curtin Call not Diamond? It's getting there, that's for sure. But hats off to Inescope. They got casuals believing the Slim Shady LP sold 4 million or Recovery 3 million. And you'd see these figures used in debates online. So when the diamond is announced for Curtin Call, it's gonna be a real shocker. Now, when it comes to Rihanna and ASAP, there's been rumors popping up about the two, but ASAP recently confirmed them. And this is from GQ's piece about this. As soon as I bring her up, he starts beaming like a teenager whose crush just accepted his prom invite. I could practically hear the angel singing, the love of my life he calls her, my lady. He also had this to add from the article, so much better when you got the one, she amounts to probably like a million of the other ones, I think when you know, you know, she's the one. And since fans are yet to hear a word from Rihanna, many have gone viral with reactions like this, she's the one for me too bro, you're not special. And as expected, Drake was brought up a couple of times. Drake got another classic on the way of this interview alone. Cause who can forget? Oh, we love the woman who hasn't changed since day one. She's someone, she's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. And some were asking, y'all remember when Drake did this and she left him and there was more. Drake reading ASAP Rocky calling Rihanna the love of his life, and things get worse, OGs will catch that one. Does Rihanna know ASAP Rocky is dating her? Just wondering. And a lot got famous from these viral reactions. Someone tell ASAP Rocky that Rihanna is the love of everyone's life, he's not special. So generally, based on viral reactions, fans await Rihanna's confirmation, as this is seen as just another Drake-esque move so far. Moving on, Crook recently sparked a debate asking, who would you credit for taking hip-hop global? And I'll throw in some objectivity in this one as we go along the way. And for instance, when Eminem was brought up, a user stated, I'd argue that Snoop made it global before him, just not as big or widespread, but the genre was bigger at that point. Crook responded, It's been global since the 80s, between Curtis Blow, Ron DMC and LL, the whole world was exposed to hip-hop. But this is a good discussion that will educate people, so let's ask him. And here's a response to that. Hip-hop in the 80s was like Bitcoin in 2013. Sure, some people knew it, but it wasn't as popular as it got in the late 90s slash early 2000s. This analogy is factually sound, and like I said before, it will vary depending on where you resided. And here's some facts to back that up. Raising Hell by Ron DMC is credited as the first platinum and multi-platinum rap album in the United States. It spilled over to regions like the United Kingdom and was certified silver in 87. But that was it for studio albums from Ron DMC in the United Kingdom, so you see how opinions will vary if you were in the United States or United Kingdom at that time. I'm talking about the majority here. Beastie Boys were certified before Ron DMC in the United Kingdom and went gold in 87. Public Enemy earned silver and gold albums from 88 to 90. NWA went silver in 90, but MC Hammer blew up shortly after. Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him went two times platinum in 91, double the sales of Vanilla Isis to the extreme. Now that's full on mainstream in the United Kingdom. 
In reaction to the Bitcoin comment, Crook responds, We can't overlook the steps it took though. One act opened a door for the other, and everyone deserves their credit. By that point, in the United Kingdom, objectively, the incremental steps would be Beastie Boys and Run DMC, and Hammer came in with the multiplier. LL didn't break into the market that time despite huge success in the United States. A user responds to Crook, In Africa, we don't know Run DMC, but I'll definitely say Park, Eminem, 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z, and Dr. Dre. Crook responded, How old are you? And what country? The user responds, LOL, I'm 30, from South Africa. And Crook responds, Okay, too young to know, LOL. Salute though, bro. But being 30 doesn't mean he didn't have older folks to consult, I'd say, since many countries aren't as individualistic as the United States, extended families are closer for information to be passed down. And to that, a user responds to Crook. It's not a question of age, though. Lauren Hill was huge in Nigeria when I was growing up, but she never reached the levels of Eminem and 50 Cent. M was so huge, people didn't only pirate his CDs, they printed out his lyrics and sold them for lots of money. And to this, a user adds, You're right, bro. Eminem, 50 Cent, Nelly, DMX, Ja Rule, Ludacris, Jay-Z, Nas, Park, Biggie, they ruled hip-hop in Nigeria. It is different depending on countries one user expands. In my country, it started a little bit with MC Hammer, don't judge, then it started getting bigger with KRS-One, BDK, The Wu, Onyx, Das FX, Park made it bigger, Nas and Jay-Z added to that. But definitely the 2000 era made it mainstream with M50. And this one really stood out. You will see Park's poster in every barbershop in Africa and he was bald, so that should tell you something. Ghana flag emoji. Gangsta's Paradise in 95 was the first time a hip-hop song would end the year as the most popular in the world, according to reports. So you see, it was a collaborative effort from the beginning with incremental steps, some more than others. And when Eminem came along, he made it that for the first time, you could call a hip-hop artist the best-seller of a decade and remains the best-selling artist of the 21st century. But over to you guys, comment below and see you on the next one.